Jesus. Father, we have come before you tonight once again, and we are opened mm -hmm. that you pour into us, O oh God. We are opened to receive whatever it is that you have for us. Breathe unto us, O oh God. Breathe unto us, O oh God. Breathe. Breathe your life. Breathe your word upon mm -hmm. our soul, upon mm -hmm. our minds, upon mm -hmm. our bodies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we have come before you believing that indeed your word is that that carries enough power to perform surgeries on the inside of us. Your oh, word yeah. has enough power to take away whatever it is that is inside of us that is not supposed to be there. We have yes. come before you, oh God, and we ask that yes. you speak yes, for your Lord. sons and your daughters are listening. Yes, in the Lord. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised and adored. Yes, Lord. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so let me go straight into what God has for us tonight. So tonight, I want us to talk about the men and women of God who performed or demonstrated the power of, of the Holy Spirit through prayer in the Amen. scriptures. So Amen. we are going to look at these men. And at the end of tonight's service, you are going to understand that indeed the glory and the power of God is not out of reach. Anybody mm -hmm. at all can receive the power of God. Anybody yeah. at all can demonstrate the power of God as long mm -hmm. as you stay connected to the source. Mm -hmm. So tonight we are going to look at a few of them, about three of them, and then we jump into prayers. Now, I don't know about you, but I have been so blessed throughout this these days of this program because yes. the word that has been coming is just so powerful. So I want to be reminding all of us of one of the things that Apostle said on the first day. So the first day, he taught us about what the supernatural is all about. And he said something so powerful. One of the things he said was that uh, the supernatural is that which is beyond or above the natural. It is that which the human philosophy cannot explain. So anything that takes place that cannot be understood by the mere minds, by the natural minds, is what we call the supernatural. It means these things cannot happen except there is a power that is backing that thing up. And as I'm talking about this thing right now, I'm reminded of what the Bible says when it says that no man can enter into the strong man's house and take what belongs to the strong man, except you are stronger than the strong man. So it means except you have some powers backing you up. It is important to know what your source is. It is important to know what your power or where you get your power from or what is backing you up. It is important to know, it is important to have a backup because there are some battles that you cannot go by yourself, introducing yourself as who you are at the moment. It takes a backup. It takes a stronger power to back you up, to be able to go ahead and, you know, take whatever that belongs to you from whoever that is holding it down. So, it is important for us to understand that the supernatural goes beyond the natural. It is above, above the natural mind. It is impossible for anybody who has the natural mind to understand what happens in the supernatural. I want us to talk about this man called Moses. Last night, I spoke about Moses and I told you about how the glory of God fell upon the life of this man called Moses. Moses went into prayer, spoke with God for some time. And when Moses came down, the glory of God was shining all over his face. And the people around that time were able to notice that indeed something has changed around Moses. So I want us to talk about Moses. Last night, I said something. I said that it is the glory of God 
that takes a man from being an ordinary man to becoming an extraordinary man. When the glory of God falls upon your life, you become a different being. You jump from being ordinary to being an extraordinary. That's how come you jump from operating in the natural to operating in the supernatural. It is when the glory of God falls upon you. Now, Moses, from the time that Moses was born, everybody, when you read the scriptures, you can understand that indeed Moses carried an assignment. Because you can notice that when Moses was born, Moses was born in a time where they were, they were supposed to kill every male born baby. But you see, Moses was born for a purpose. Moses was born for a particular time in the lives of the Israelites. You need to understand that nothing was made for, for, for nothing's sake. Like everything was made for a purpose. Everything that God made was made for a purpose. So you and I, God did not create us for to just have fun with us. God created us for a purpose. There is a particular assignment assigned to us. There is a particular mandate assigned to our lives. So it's not like sometimes some, there are some people who feel so down, who do not believe in themselves so much because of their background, because of the kind of parents, you know, the, the parents they have and the families they were born into. And they, they feel like sometimes people feel they are, they are a mistake. Sometimes people feel it was just through a mistake that they came. So there is nothing good for their lives. There is nothing their lives can be used for. But I came here to remind you that God made you for a purpose. You come from God. You just came through your parents. So you did not come from your parents. You come from God. But you came through your parents. It is not just a coincidence that you came through that particular family. It is not a coincidence that you were born in this particular country. God made you for a purpose. There is an assignment attached to your life. There is a mandate attached to your life. So when Moses was born, Moses had an assignment attached to his life. And by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, God revealed to the mother one way or the other. I don't know whether you believe this, but I do believe that the mother had a revelation of who this son was going to be. And that was how come she decided to protect this destiny no matter what. For him to live in order to fulfill what it was that God has placed on, upon his life. It is important to live in the spirit, to live and walk in the spirit, to be able to receive every revelation there is to receive. It is important to stay connected to God, to receive revelations, revelations concerning the, the lives of your children, the destinies of your children, the assignments connected to your children's life. So that you'll be able to know how to guide and protect this life. So Moses carried an assignment and the mother had this revelation and therefore she decided to protect this baby no matter what. She said this baby is going to live for the glory of God to be manifested in the lives of the Israelites. So the mother did everything she could to protect this life. Now, when Moses was born, we all know she was, uh, he was placed in the basket and on the river and all of that. Finally, Moses grew up. Now, Moses went through various stages in his life. After he was born, he was given to the princess and all of that. The princess took care of him. At a point in the life of Moses, Moses killed someone. Now, please follow me. I want to drive a, out a point right now. Follow me. Moses killed someone at a point in his life. But yet, the assignment connected to his life was not taken from him. Hmm. You need to understand that you will walk through all stages of life. As you are growing in this, your Christian journey, you will walk through every stage. You will go through it. You know, maybe if I am supposed to ask you right now, and if you are supposed to list all the bad things that you've done 
a mere man standing somewhere will immediately condemn you, will immediately judge you that you do not deserve to be used by God because of all the bad things that you've done, because of all the bad things that you've gone through. But believe me that God created you for a purpose. And because he created you for a purpose, when you find him, when you get connected to him, no matter what you've been through, no matter all the wrongs that you've done, he will still use you. Amen. It's just a matter of time. God will still use you. So Moses, upon all these things that took place in his life, Moses, at a point in his life, he killed someone. Now, let me just bring this in. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, the Bible says, Before you were formed in the womb of your mother, God knew you. That is how come you need to believe and you need to understand that there is a purpose assigned to your name. There is a purpose. There is an assignment assigned to your life. And so therefore, there is nothing that can stop you from manifesting the glory that has been placed on your life. No matter the stages that you go through in this life, you will manifest the glory of God. So Moses, at this point, you know, killing someone, Moses has become scared. Moses is afraid. Moses is just on the run because he has done the worst. He has done something that was never supposed to be done. So Moses was on the run. But guess what? God, God who is merciful, God who understand what it is for a man to go through before he can realize what God wants to do with his life. God still found Moses worthy. God still found Moses qualified because if you remember, I said something last night. I said, God does not call the qualified. He, he qualifies the called. So no matter what you think of yourself, if God thinks differently of you, then so be it. I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. And I bind any doubt from the enemy that causes you to think that you cannot be used by God. It does not matter what your life has been, how your life has been looking like. It does not matter the many abortions you've done. It does not matter the fornication. It does not matter what you've been through. As long as you've come back to God, as long as you've come back staying connected, staying logged into God, no matter what you've gone through in the past, your past remains in the past. In the name of Jesus, I bind every Every voice, every doubting voice that speaks doubt into your ear, that makes you feel less of yourself, that makes you believe that you cannot be used by God. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Your life can be used by God. Amen. It is never too late. Yes, Lord. It is ne never too late. God can still use you. So Moses going through all these things now, Moses has come to a point in his life and it has come to the point where God has decided to finally reveal himself to Moses. So we know that in Exodus chapter three, God revealed himself as a burning bush to Moses. Moses encountered God. Moses encountered his glory. Now it was at this moment that Moses began to have this communication with God. Moses began to ask God after God has told him what he wanted him to do in, you know, delivering the Israelites from the hands of the Egyptians. Now, Moses was a little bit confused because he had no idea who this God is. He had mm. just met him. So in this conversation, Moses was asking a lot of questions and he had doubt in himself that he couldn't be someone that, uh, because at that point, you know, there is no way that the, the, you will see a burning bush and hear a voice from a burning bush. So already Moses had known that indeed I have met a supreme being. Mm -hmm. Right. So at that point, Moses had already believed that this, this person I'm speaking to is not just an ordinary person. He's a yeah. supreme being. So because he knew that he began to ask questions. Because if you are sending me like this, I need to know more of you. I need to understand who you really are so that I will know what to present to the people you are sending me to. You see, that is why it is important that the glory of God is shown 
that, that we ask for the manifest presence of God, that the glory of God will be known like around us, it will be so obvious that indeed the glory of God is upon us. Because sometimes it is really difficult to present yourself in a way that we cannot see you to be. Because if you say you are sent by God, what is really showing that you are sent by God? You know, last night, I don't know if it was last night or a few nights ago, Apostle says something about um this um, church that um, Jobbers went there in the U.S. and then they killed the men of God, the pastor and the people in the church and all of that. And he said the president of the U.S. said he thought that the church was supposed to be the safest place because there, there was supposed to be some kind of security in the church. And it, it, and it was sad. It was sad. So it means that if you come, you say you are called by God, you said you, you have come from God, that God has sent you what is the evidence that indeed God has sent you? What is the evidence? What shows that indeed you have that power that you say you have? What shows? So it was, that mo it, it was in that moment in Moses' life that he had to ask a lot of questions. As he was communicating with God, he needed to understand who God is and what he was going to present to the Egyptians and the leaders of the Egyptians. So Moses spoke with God and God gave him power. God gave him power to perform signs and wonders. Now, let me remind you that last night I said something. I said that when you stay connected to God, as in when you stay in communication with God, you begin to grow in power. You begin to move from one level to another level. So the more Moses mm. was spending time with God, communicating with God, having that communion, that precious moment with God, he, he, he did not know. I, I, I presume he did not know at the time, but he was receiving power from him. He was receiving power from him the more god spoke to him the more he received what he was saying the more uh, he spoke to god he was receiving power from god he was receiving power from god he was receiving power from god so it got to a point where god said put your rod on the ground mm. it turned to something do this, something happened. Do that, something happened. Then Moses realized that indeed he has met someone special. So I need to remind you and I need to repeat that it is important that you stay in connection with God because the more you stay in connection with God, the more you receive power, the more you grow in power. Ladies and gentlemen, after this 14 days of this program, this amazing Holy Ghost convocation, the words we've heard during, throughout this program is not enough to manifest the power of God. It is what we do after this program that counts. It is the time that we decide to spend with God after this program that matters. Please, I urge you, don't leave this program and remain the same. After tonight, after the 14 days, you need to grow in the presence. You need to grow in waiting and spending time in the presence of God. It is how we, we yeah. receive our yeah. power. It yeah. is how we receive power. It is how we gain power, connecting to God. So Moses began to perform miracles. The time came for Moses to go to the Egypt, Egyptian leaders and, you know, power, signs and wonders, signs and wonders, signs and wonders, because Moses had encountered glory. Moses had encountered glory. I know we already know what happened with Moses and the Egyptians and all of that. It got to a point where God had to send these 10 plagues on the Egyptians for them to understand that indeed this instruction that is coming is not coming from man. It is coming from a supreme being. It got to a point where the time came for the Israelites to leave Egypt. And then God, through Moses, divided the Red Sea. Mm. And that is amazing. That is 
such a you see i i i said i i rem, i reminded all of us of what the supernatural means what apostle taught us and the supernatural is something that goes beyond the natural man how is it that a sea a sea not a river not a stream a sea can be divided into two for a mm. bare land i'm oh my goodness the power of god the the power the the power of god is amazing that when it falls on a man when it falls on a man you you we cannot doubt when the power of god falls on a man we cannot even doubt that you are not sent by god because it is only God that can do these things. It is only God that can perform these miracles. It is only God that can perform these signs and wonders. I know, yes, I know that we mostly talk about the things that the enemy can do. And all, but let me tell you, God is the supreme source of power. And there is not, it's not everything that God yeah. does that the enemy can do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. God is the original source. Mm. So what God does it's mind blowing, and there is no way the enemy can do what God does. Mm. Mm. I want yeah. to talk about Esther. 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 I. You see, let me let me just repeat myself. I I I said this last night. The spirit of God is not limited to gender. I quoted this scripture that says that those that are led by the spirit of God are called sons of God. Sons not because of gender issues, not because of gender matters. Sons because sons means maturity. So the power of God is not restricted to male. It does not, it, you don't have to be a man before you can demonstrate the power of God. It takes a person who stays connected to the source of power that demonstrates the power of God. So the power of God can be demonstrated through any individual who spends intentional time with God. Esther was a queen. And we all know these stories, so I'm not going to waste much time, you know, talking about the history and all of that. But Esther, after spending days in prayers and fasting, after spending days in prayers and fasting, Esther came out and caused the impossible to become possible. You know, we said that the king, you know, had to point his staff or whatever before you can come to him because there were certain days that you cannot go to the king. This has been something that was in existence for a very long time. It has been like that ever since that they, they, they can get to a time where you cannot go straight into the king's chambers unless he calls you. So this is not something, I'm sure that the kings ahead of this particular king, maybe at some point, you know, try to change something, but it, it couldn't change because this was something that had been established long time ago. But it caused, it, it took three days prayer and fasting of a queen and his people and the impossible became possible oh my goodness the impossible something that had been in its impossible state for a very long time now became possible after three days prayer and fasting let me tell you if somebody tells you that prayer you know i've heard people Unfortunately, I've heard people saying that prayer is 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 is, uh, is an old tradition. Prayer does no no longer works. You, you don't have to pray that much. Prayer is not important anymore. You just have to live a righteous life and read your Bible and go to church, and that is it. That is not it. Like I've been saying, prayer is how we communicate with our father. So prayer cannot be an old tradition. No matter what is happening, no matter the situation, no matter what you are going through, the moment you step into the place of prayer, the moment you begin to, it is in prayer that we cause the impossibilities to become possible. It is in prayer that we cause the things that are not in existence to come into existence. It exactly. is in prayer. It is in prayer that we command the supernatural. Mm. 
So prayer is not past. Prayer is not an old tradition. The moment you decide to stay, you set your eyes on something that has been going wrong in the family, in the business, and you decide to pray about it. I'm telling you, it does not matter how long it has stayed there. It does not matter how long it has been going on. Once you step into the place of prayer and you begin to command and you begin to demand and you begin to break, destroy, build, you begin to command some things. Anything that calls itself impossible becomes possible. Possible, exactly. That is what happened in the day of Esther. Mm. Three days fasting and prayers, it changed a lot of things. Mm. It changed a lot of things. Now, the last person I want to talk about, then we enter into a moment of prayer. Mm. Elijah, my mm. fa- one of my favorite prophets in the Bible, Elijah. Elijah, you know, it is Elijah that the Bible calls a man of prayer. Hmm. James chapter five, the Bible says that Elijah was just a man like us, yet he prayed. Yeah, he I prayed. think I've said this on this platform before some time ago when I had the opportunity. The Bible talks about Elijah being a man like us. And it was a, it was a way that the um, scriptures was trying to, you know, encourage us to pray. Uh, in other versions, the Bible says that Elijah was uh, uh, had like passions, just as just like us. Elijah could be hungry. Elijah could be angry. Elijah could be sad. Elijah could feel all sorts of emotions, yet he prayed. You know, nowadays, Christians find a lot of excuse not to pray. A lot of excuse. And so many excuses. We find ourselves in, 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 in in a pot of excuses, trying to, you know, trying to prevent ourselves from praying. We keep saying, oh, I'm too tired. I'm too angry. I'm too upset. I'm, I, I'm too sad. You know, a lot of excuses. But the Bible says Elijah, a man who stood and called down fire from heaven. Elijah was just a man like us. Yet Elijah prayed. So if Elijah prayed and he was a man like us, what is stopping us from praying? Because if you can understand all these powerful and supernatural things that prayers did for these people, these men of God, what is stopping us from stepping into the place of prayer and commanding these supernaturals to happen? Elijah, Elijah, the man, the only one man one man against thousands of other false prophets. He wanted to prove a point. He wanted to prove to the people that indeed there is only one true living God oh, yeah. that they were supposed to serve. Mm. You see, sometimes we, we don't need, we, we only need the miracle of God to take place to just prove a point. Mm. I love this Mama Esther's song. It says, but for the sake of the people, the onlookers, the people around, the people who are, who are waiting to see what will happen to me, for the sake of those people, God shows something. God do something for them to know that indeed I serve a living God. God show a sign, perform a miracle for them to believe that indeed it's not just with my mouth that I'm saying. Indeed, I serve a living God and he is capable of bringing me out of this mess, out of this trouble, out of this situation. It doesn't matter whether I found myself in it. It doesn't matter whether I put myself in it. It doesn't matter how I found myself in it. As long as I have a God who is merciful who is capable of doing the impossible i know and believe that he will take me out of this so sometimes we just need god to show up for the sake of the people around us just for them to know that indeed we serve a god oh my goodness if we can begin to perform these supernatural signs and wonders for the people around us to believe in our god Are we not tired of hearing these people mocking us because of mocking our God because of the things that we've been going through? 
Some of us have been going through difficulties and we keep talking about our God and the people around us are like, ah, if you have a God, why then are you going through this? Oh my God, it's time for us to command the supernatural. Amen. It's time for us to command the supernatural. Mm. It's time for us to call down fire from heaven. Just mm. for the people around us to see that indeed our God is a living God. Yes. Nothing is impossible. Some time ago, we were having this conversation at work and someone asked me, how come those miracles that took place in the Bible cannot happen in our days? And that's a very interesting question. And you know, uh, I, I can tell you that I, I, I am not, I don't think I, I was the best person she should have asked this question because I, I don't think I had the best answer for her. But I do believe that everything that took place in the Bible days can happen in our time. Yeah. You see, when Apostle was teaching us the other time, he said something, he said, faith gives us supernatural access. Faith gives us supernatural access. So yes. I do believe that these people in the Bible that performed these supernatural happenings, that performed these miracles, had enough faith. You see, it is very difficult nowadays for Christians, believers, some of us, to have faith like we are supposed to have. The faith that can move mountains is nowadays is, is quite difficult for us to have that kind of faith. But believe me, if we were supposed to grow in our faith, if we were supposed to have that faith that can move mountains, we can, we can not only move mountains, but we can call down fire from heaven and it will happen. Yes, yes. Trust and obey. It is one thing to trust and it is another thing to obey. It is one thing to have faith and it is another thing to act on your faith. Because mm. you can say with your mouth that indeed, oh, I have faith. I have faith in God. I believe that God can do this. And it is another thing to believe that, to believe the instruction that God will give you. Let me tell you, if, if, you'll be honest with yourself. If you were Moses and God asked you to, you know, point your stake or your, your is there a stake? Yeah, the stake to the sea and it will be divided. You will be questioning God. You will be asking God lots of questions, forgetting who he is and what the instructions that he has given you. Sometimes you need to believe God for who he is. You need to believe that indeed you, you could have, if, if, if it was anybody else who had said this thing, maybe you would, you would doubt it. But because it is God saying it, that time when Jesus was with the disciples and Peter said, we've been working since morning. We've been fishing since morning and we are not getting anything. Jesus said, put your net there, cast your net at this side. Peter said, I've already done that. And we did not get any, I've done that like several times and we are not getting anything. But you know what Peter said? Peter said this powerful thing and it's so powerful. He wow. said, I have been doing this for several hours. I'm not getting anything. But mm. I will do this again because you because. are the one saying I should do it. At oh night. my goodness. Mm. Mm. Because mm. you are the one saying I should do it, mm. I will mm. go mm. ahead and do it. Mm. And that moment, Peter was expressing his faith in God. Peter mm. was letting Jesus understand that indeed, I believe in the words that come out of your mouth. Although I have done this, I know I did this by my strength and by my own understanding. But this time, because you are saying it, I will go with the strength that you are giving me i will go based on the power in your word because i believe that when you say something that is what will happen oh my god wow. oh my god if only we can have faith if only we can have faith if only we can trust the one who is telling us to go ahead enough Oh my God. Sometimes we will spend time in prayer, just praying, God, I'm so tired. This thing is not working. What do I do? Guess what? 
God always provides answers. But for us to take the action, that is where the problem is. Imagine God saying something to you. Imagine God telling you to do something. God, God, oh, the supreme being telling you to do something and you are there questioning. You are there asking mm. him questions. Mm. Some, somebody can go as far as asking, God, are you sure this will work? Oh my God. Oh my God. We need to have faith. We need to have faith. We need to believe in who God is. God, I know I've been doing this my own way for a very long time. God, mm. I know I've been doing this and that. I know I've been using my strength. I know I've been using my wisdom and my power. I know I've been using my knowledge. And it has not been going through. But because of your word, because of what you are saying to me, because of the instruction you are giving, because it is coming out of your mouth, now I am willing to lay aside everything I think I know. I'm willing to lay aside everything I think I have and follow what you are giving me. Mm. That is faith. That is faith. Oh my God. If only we can position ourselves well. If only we can place our faith well in Christ Jesus. If only mm. we can believe that indeed God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all, we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Sometimes I hear people saying, I've been praying. I've been praying for a long time. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not getting any results. The last time I had the opportunity on this platform, I said something. I said, sometimes you don't pray to get solutions from God. Sometimes your prayer does not bring solutions. Rather, it provides you with strength to be able to wait on the solution. Because remember, your time is not God's time. Oh, your time is not God's time. God has his own time for you. God has his own plans for you. Therefore, you think you have been praying and God has not been answering. That's not what is happening. God's time has not come for you. So you pray not because you want to receive an immediate solution. Sometimes you pray so that you will receive strength to be able to wait. Oh, Ooh. the Bible says in Isaiah that those that wait upon the Lord, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes, yes. So when you wait upon the Lord, your strength is being renewed. Your strength mm. is being renewed. So you have to get to the point in time where you say, oh God, even if you don't do it for me now, I will still come in your presence. I will still wait in your presence. I will still tarry. Because I know I'm receiving some strength. So the Bible says, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. God is able. God is able. capable. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to jump right into a moment of prayer. Begin to bless the name of the Lord tonight. Bless the name of the Lord for the word that has come unto us. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Jesus, we thank you for your word that has come to us. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. We thank you for your word that has come to us, O God. Shadaba, a tender cos cayante, lico barato, siante rabaha, 
Araco Pashada Balikos Kayate Rico Zibele de Baha, Iende Keto Liko Perada Baswa Teke Palada. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Now, I believe that each and every one of us here came into tonight's service with an expectation. Mm. And if you did, the Bible says that the expectation of a believer shall not be cut short. Cut off, yeah. So tonight, the Lord is going to do to us according to our expectation. So mm. right now, if you don't have an expectation, I need you to find an expectation. Mm. I need you to get ready for what God is about to do tonight. And I would want you to pray. And I would want you to pray with your heart, with your heart, with your mind, with your spirit. Because God is going to do something within us tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray this prayer tonight. Lord, my father, your word declares that all power belongs to you. And that mm. you are ready to give power to those who believe in you. Mm. So that we can manifest on this earth. So father, mm. we are praying tonight. I am praying tonight that you give unto us power. Let your power fill my spirit. Let your power fill my spirit. Let your power fill my spirit. Oh Lord, give me power to express divinity here on earth. Oh Lord, empower me. Iyoko zivandela gada. leko shadaba. Rekendi vali grande vrende vragada irabada bada ba ivante vali granda bako shada ba izegede vrande vali granda yada Father, I am on you for power. Lord, release power. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, release power. Lord, release power. Lord, release power. Oh Lord, as you gave Elijah power, as you gave Esther power, as you gave Moses power. I am before thee. Father, give me power. Lord, give me power. In the name of Jesus. Power for exploits. Power for kingdom exploits. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, give me power. Father, pour power on my life. Fill me with power. Fill me with power. Let power fill this vessel. In the name of Jesus. Ikon de veli grabadaya, ivelege de velege de valagada, ivokon de veli brando le kon di vayadosha, e bragada. Power, power from above, power to overcome, power for exploits, power for supernatural works. Oh Lord, release that power. Ivokon de veli grabada. Rende veli gaba ige de valada. Rende veli kranda brako shadaba. Rende veli grabada yage de valagada. Power of God. Ikon de veli grabada. E rabada bali grende veli kosha. E rabaka ban de veli gedu shadaba. E zegede zegede. E rakendi veli branda. E rabada badaba. Power of God. Sweep over this platform. Wherever your people are, touch them by your power. 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 Oh my God. Ivokon de veligrabada. E rebede veligrande velikobayada. Your power. Let your power pour on this platform. Let your power pour upon your people. Touch us by your hand of power. Touch us by your right hand of power. Live it. Diva yanga da. Bala baduze. Ibraken de vrende vragada. Rege de gede lege de gede. Iyagada vali grande veli konde vayadosa. Irabada. 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 Iyakanda valagada. Irende veli grabadu shadabe. Iyokonde vele gede. Irabada vali gada yavada lagada. Irekende branda yakosa. Irekende de vranda yakada. Irekende de vele gede. Ivon de vele Power, power, 
power for the supernatural. Pray for power. Pray for power. In the name of Jesus. 